Ha Long Bay, Vietnam's pristine tropical paradise filled with limestone islands, beautiful crystal clear waters, and untouched natural landscapes. Or is it? Is this place as beautiful as the Instagram photos? Or have we been misled? Is there a darker truth here? Today, I hope to find that out. Here we are, we're in Lan Ha Bay, Ha Long Bay, Vietnam, and we're in a boat, and this is our room. Look at the swan cows. Here's the bay. We have a balcony. And here's the bathroom. It's bigger than this room, almost. We have a bath. Shower. We've just had our welcome food and drink. Now we are hanging out here for a bit before we go on our first activity. One of the first things you'll notice when you arrive in Ha Long Bay is the sheer number of people. The area of Ha Long Bay and the adjacent area of Lan Ha Bay currently have 540 boats operating, with about half of those being overnight vessels. The other thing you'll notice is that the air quality here is not quite as pristine as you might have thought from the photos, with the air quality being marked as unhealthy for a large part of the year. This is due to coal plants, cement plants and other factories that operate along the coast of Vietnam. Unfortunately, air pollution is a big problem in most of northern Vietnam though, and the air pollution here is much better than areas like Hanoi, which sees the country's worst air pollution. We're on our first activity. We're kayaking around the lake. It's very peaceful here, it's very quiet. I think Lan Ha Bay is a lot quieter than Ha Long Bay where all the other boats are. But it's still just as pretty, I think. Worth the two and a half hour drive here? Yes. Look, there's our boat. We're here on the bay. We have kayaked. Now we are going back to the boat. What are we gonna do when we are back to the boat? Drink. <laughs> Kayaking around the bay, we saw an abundance of fish and mostly clean blue waters with very minimal plastic pollution and rubbish. The water quality here is closely monitored to try and keep the water at a healthy level. After it came out a few years ago that there was extensive damage to the coral reefs that reside here under the water. The government has been taking a lot of steps to prevent future damage, including limiting vessels like fishing vessels and also placing tighter regulations on waste management from the many cruise ships. about to go on a boat tour. It is seven o'clock in the morning. You can wake up early and do Tai Chi, but it involved waking up at like 5.30 in the morning, which I was not game for because we were kept awake by somewhat forced karaoke and weird games last night. We had like the nicest roast Christmas dinner, which was really unexpected. And they gave us these gifts, which were like just branded scarves for the company. Dinner was nice, but then afterwards there was all this forced karaoke where they were trying to guilt people into coming and singing in front of everybody and it was just really awkward. We kind of snuck out of there as did many other people and tried to go to sleep. I have to get going because we have to go and catch a the tender, which is the boat off the back of this boat, to the cave that we're gonna be boating through today. So let's get going. So we are here right now, the central house. Yes, so we, we start here. As you can see, the entrance to the dark cave is right here. Han Tui means the dark cave. Dark cave. And we go through here, through the bright caves, into a lagoon. And we, you will spend 
about 10 minutes in here and you can go back this way. And here you can ask the driver, the rower to uh, take a turn and have a small uh, mini trip to the Sien Cave or the throughout cave. Sien means throughout. And you come back over here. Please do not try to go this way. This way leads to the ocean. On our second and last day, we set out on some boats run by local people. These traditional boats are paddled in quite an interesting way and allowed us to see the Light Cave, which is where you'll go if you visit Lanha Bay. Our guide before we set off in the morning told us that we might see the Langar monkeys. There's only about 70 left of these monkeys in the park, so it's rare to spot them. And we were lucky enough, in fact, to see them. I don't have good footage of it, unfortunately, but I will include some footage here, hopefully, so you can see how adorable these monkeys are. While it's sad to hear that there are so few left, their conservation is being taken into account and their numbers are monitored to try and help their population. So what can we conclude after spending two days here? I think that, like anything, it's a grey area. I would love to say that yes you can come here or no you absolutely shouldn't but the reality is that yes this level of tourism is going to be damaging to the environment but at the same time the tourist money is what contributes to the conservation of the area and without it it likely would also degrade over time there's no clean answer here and all i could really ask is that you do your own research and make your own decision for yourself not very helpful i know but i can say i had a good time here but i wouldn't necessarily come back thank you so much for watching if you stayed to this point i hope you enjoyed this video and make sure to check out some of my other videos and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Bye!